Good morning friends. I hope everyone is doing well. I request everyone to watch my videos in a sequence for better understanding. If you really like my teaching and my efforts, please press the like button, share the videos with your friends, subscribe to my channel and also press the bell button to get the regular updates. In the last video, I have discussed about the ranges of various classes. Am I right or wrong? In class full addressing, we have class A, class B, class C, class D, class E is there. Am I right? What is the range of class A? 1 to 126. And we have 128 to 191 for class B, 192 to 223 is the class C, 224 is to 239 is class D and 240 to 255 is class E because whenever we represent the IP address we will represent in dotted decimal representation. Am I right or wrong? Now when it is a dotted decimal representation the first decimal number okay in the first octet what is the first decimal number is there by looking at that one we can say that which class it belongs to. Once we identify which class it belongs to then we can identify how many bits are there for the network ID and how many bits are there for the host ID. Am I right or wrong? If it is false in the range of class A then I can say that it is a class A network. 8 bits are there for the network ID, 24 bits are there for the host ID. Am I right or wrong? Now in this ranges we did not mention anywhere 127 because 1 to 126 is there, 128 to 191 is there, where is the 127? Am I right or wrong? Where is the 127? And that time I have discussed that I will discuss this 127 address separately because it is used for loopback addressing. So in this video I want to discuss about the loopback addressing where we will use the range 127 okay now let me discuss what is the purpose of loopback addressing where we will use it now if i ask someone to check whether internet is coming or not what he will do he will open the browser and he will press google.com if it is opening then he will say that sir internet is coming else he will say that sir internet is not coming am i right is it clear but how you need to check if you are your net mission is A and mission B is there, okay, google.com or something and you have a, between you will have a router, okay, some other routers and then it will be connected. Now, if internet is not coming or the server is not responding, then what is the assumption? Your network interface card is not working. Even if your network interface card is not working, then also internet will not come. If the, from your mission to the router the cable is spoiled or this link is corrupted then also internet will not come between these two routers whatever the link is there if it is damaged also internet will not come between these two router and the destination B if their link is corrupted also then you will not get internet even mission B's network interface card is also not working then also you will not get internet am I right these are the various reasons Maybe because of that one, your internet is not coming. Then what you have to do? First, you will have to check your own network interface card, whether it is working or not. Am I right or wrong? Then what people will do? They will check the LAN cable. If it is blinking, they'll say that, yeah, internet is coming or the packets are coming. Something has happened in my mission. They will say that. But how actually you have to do is that you have to use the loopback address. Okay, so how you will check whether your network interface card is working or not, you will use the loopback address. What is the loopback address is that you, you are sending a packet to yourself without sending to the, in the network. Are you able to understand? You are sending a packet to yourself without sending the packet to the router. Then you can ask me that, sir, in source IP address and in the destination IP address, I will pick keep my own IP address. Am I right? Then also the packet will go and come to me because source address is mine and destination address is mine because I am sending the packet and the packet has to reach to me only. 
then I will keep the destination IP address as also IA. Then obviously it will come to me, why should I use the separate address as 127.0.0.1 or something? Why to start the IP address with 127? Now if you are using the destination IP address as your address, then what will happen? Can you tell me? The packet will go to the router, then router will say that the destination IP address is belongs to A only and it will send. In that case, what is happening? Your packet is traversing in the network and coming back to you. But you don't want to send the packet to the network. It should go to you and come back to you. It should not traverse in the network. If you keep the destination IP address as also your own address, it will go to the router and come back to you. That you don't want to do. So that's why in source IP address, you will keep your own IP address. And in the destination IP address, you will keep 127 dot something, 0 dot 0 dot 1 something you will keep. Am I right? Is it clear? You should not use all zeros and all 255s after 127. You can use anything. Meaning is that 127 dot 0 dot 0 dot 0 you should not use. 127 dot 255 dot 255 dot 255 you should not use. These two IP addresses you should not use. Other than this, any IP address you can use from the range starting from 127. Then what will happen? You can ask me, sir, source IP address is my IP address and destination IP address you kept it as 127.0.0.1. Then what will happen? This information is coming from AS network layer. Am I right or wrong? Because IP address will be kept by the network layer. Then it will come to the data link layer okay now data link layer without passing to the physical layer it will again send to the network layer application layer means network layer transport layer application layer top layer it will send so whatever the information is coming from your application layer will come to the transport layer it will come to the network layer then it is coming to the data link layer after the data link layer you have a physical layer you are not sending to the physical layer also you are directly communicating again back to your own network layer and your own application layer so it will send the packet to itself without sending to the network so that is the advantage of loopback address okay so test your your own network interface card is working or not i hope you have understood what is the use of loopback address then you can ask me where we will use it another way we can use it for you have created a web application am i right or wrong so your web application will have the local hosting and client and server also will be there am i right or wrong now before deploying it in the network first you will check whether it is working the client code is working and the server code is working or not so then what you will do you will keep it in the same system you will write the client code and the server code then you will use the loopback address to check whether it is communication is happening between the client and server are you able to understand there also you will use the loopback address without sending to the network you are communicating with the client to server with the help of loopback address so i hope you have understood the uses of loopback address if you still have any doubts related to this loopback address feel free to ask me in the comment session i will try to clear your doubts in less than 24 hours if you really like my teaching, please press the like button, share the videos with your friends, subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching my video. Have a nice day.